Hello there, I'm your host Dan Rojas. I have solar panels hooked up to grid tie inverters. And those grid tie inverters, even though we are not hooked to the grid right now, they do work off of generators, believe it or not. So you can incorporate a grid tie inverter with a traditional generator. You may want to test it out. I don't know if all of them work, but the ones I have do. Hold on, it's gonna get noisy. So right now we have full power to everything. I've got three generators running and about a thousand watts of grid tie going to those generators. Say hello, Charlie. Hi. Right now our doggies are... Rocky, stop doing that. That's... No. Say hi, Rocky. Rocky's got a fan on him. Charlie does too inside. Keep him nice and cool. We have full power to just about everything using a combination of generators and solar. This is how we're drying laundry because a dryer, like the clothes dryer, is 5,000 watts. So there's not really much you're gonna do about that. The sun works just as well, total waste of energy. But we have been using the washing machine with the spin cycle. I hooked another uh, generator way down by our pump. Our pump. Uh, but the reason for this video is to show you this. This is a 100 watt panel and if you look, the lights I don't know if you can see them or not I'm hoping you can but the output lights are doing fine so what's happening is we are giving our grid which happens to be generator power 80 watt uh, actually 70 watts with this one panel even though it's a hundred watt and it's a 200 watt inverter a little shaded right now but that's what it's doing so I've got six hundred watts hooked up I'm gonna add an additional 1500 what this does is it dramatically reduces the amount of fuel that you use so ooh, look at that nice iced coffee if you do it right we've been without power for 36 hours and life has not been too much far from normal really we've used let me get to the other side this is noisy everything's done with extension cords I can keep an eye on stuff because this is how fires happen if something gets overloaded, but if you're responsible, it's no big deal. This is another cement structure. So we have the storm shelter and then this. This one, uh, I believe, this is all solid cement too. I did a really interesting building process on this 16 years ago where the cells are put together and then it's all poured really quick. It took me two days to build that, Denise and I together, foundation and everything. My mom's house, we turn the power on for her fridge, and that's about it. We have cable, internet access again. Once they got their grid up, we have electricity for it. But if you come over here, I'm sorry if it's real shaky. It's kind of hard to see what you're doing. This generator is powering our printer, and uh, I'll show you. because we have an online business selling, of all things, for no lenses and parabolic mirrors, and the work does not stop. There's Denise working diligently. Hello, Denise. Hello, guys, again. It's, it's been very busy the past few days. Yay. Oh, which is a good thing, uh, a little bit of a challenging thing. Thank you to all of our customers. Thank you to all of our customers, of course. If you. If you look here, the LED lighting, and I still have some compact fluorescence up, but because LED is so efficient, we have extension cords. So I did all the wiring up here, just traditional extension cords. Just run them. And normally, if you were doing incandescent bulbs, that would not be very safe because of fire hazards. But with this, every bit of lighting that we have in our office and our building takes less than 200 watts. So this cord, can handle 1500 watts easily that would be kind of pushing it but it's way below the limit so we can run everything in here I don't have everything on right now because of there's no need for it we're just doing the bare essentials but I've got some solar back here I've got batteries charged in different places should something happen but the neat thing about a hurricane is it you end up with stuff like this 
This is what happens to oak trees and every tree. It, it rips all the little tiny ends off and it's everywhere. The road was completely covered with it. It was really awesome. But our solar cooking stations back there, this is the reason that we are on generator power, by the way, because after a hurricane, you do not always get beautiful sunny skies. If you live in the islands, maybe, but we live in Florida, so you still have to deal with this. This is how you connect a grid tie inverter to a generator. It's pretty simple, just plug it in like you would. Put it at the end of the line. So in other words, you put like a splitter towards the end and that way it back feeds. You don't want to plug it right in. Hold on, I'll show you. Maybe I won't, because it's noisy. <clears throat> but you don't want to plug it right into the socket. You want it to be at the end. But that helps right now. Total, Denise and I have had four generators intermittently running one all the time for the AC in our house and we have used 20 gallons of gasoline so far in 36 hours which is actually doing pretty good considering. I'm your host Dan Rojas. Thank you for watching and enjoy our videos and I will have more of the solar added if the power stays off.